video here is going to talk to you about Pythagoras within a circle. I have nicknamed, nicknamed these the tunnel tanker questions because they seem to always be about the depth of a liquid in a tanker or finding the height or the width of a tunnel of some description and you'll understand what I mean when you see these in past papers. So learning intentions, be able to identify and create a right angle triangle. This is a bit people struggle with the most sometimes is getting started with a triangle. Once you've got your right angle triangle, we're going to perform Pythagoras. Then there's an extra wee step that helps us calculate an unknown depth, height or width, depending on the scenario in the question. You should have some prior knowledge of circle before um, and some of the terminology such as the word chord, what bisect means and tangent. I will explain some of them on the next slide, some experience of symmetry and you should be able to do basic Pythagoras. Okay, so let's introduce you to some circle terminology that you may or may not know already. So this first line here going from A right the way down to B cuts the circle in half, creates symmetry, that is called your diameter. Okay, and we should all know that. Okay, diameter is a long one. Um, the line over here, CD, is called a chord. And all the questions that have Pythagoras within a circle will say somewhere in the question the chord AB or the chord MN and either give you a length for it or ask you to work it out. This long gap here that I need to fill in, that where the diameter meets your chord, um, it cuts at right angles, and this is called a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular is a math term for making at right angles, and bisector, you've probably heard the word dissect before, which means to cut up. Bisect means it cuts in half. So the diameter cuts the chord exactly in half. Okay, so it is, if, you, if I tell you what CD is, you're going to half it. All right. So many of the circle questions you're going to see, they require you to create the right angle triangle yourself. They don't have it visibly on show because that would lead you into recognising this was a Pythagoras question too easily. Could on the rare occasion involve trigonometry as well. So what we have to do is we have to look for sometimes a missing radius or uh, radii for plural. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my colour pen and just show you that by drawing in this line coming from the centre to the end of our chord creates a radius okay and I can do it to the other side as well and that's me created the right angle triangles that we're going to use okay so from the center to the chord the center to the outside will be your triangle this I think is the most difficult bit for uh, pupils to draw or distinguish to get them started and without it you really can't proceed so just to reiterate what I said there um before we I go into the question, my number one tip is we always extract our triangle. If your triangle is not extracted, you could possibly lose a mark in the exam. But if you look, make a mistake and you've no triangle, you'll lose two marks. So we can't afford to do that. So please extract the triangle. Now, my examples here are very basic. They're usually presented in the exam with um, a story around it and a picture. So this is a height of a tunnel. There would probably be a picture of like a real life tunnel as well supporting this. And obviously we know a tunnel isn't a complete circular shape. So they've put this dotted line in to show you just the tunnel part. And they've told us AB is 12, so the chord is 12, and it's told us that the radius of the tunnel is eight. They'll sometimes tell you the radius or the diameter. So it's important to read all this information. Now, I've missed out the centre of this circle, so I'm just going to put that on there. Now, the tip is this bit, how to create your triangle. We see some wonderful, weird and lovely triangles, and I'm marking these as an exam. I see people do triangles like this. I see people doing right angle triangles like that. Neither of them are going to help us. The triangle, the rule I teach for the triangle is it must come from the centre to the chord. So the centre straight down to the chord and the centre to the outside. Your choice, do you want to go left or do you want to go right? I personally, out of habit, will probably always go to the right. So this is the right angle triangle I'm going to be using. And then what I do is I extract that. I pull it out and do a nice new diagram. Okay. Now the information they've given to us is that AB is 12. So if this full length here is 12, my um, triangle is only half of that because this line here, basically is your diameter that's cutting it down the middle. So I'm going to use six here on my triangle. It tells me that radius of the tunnel is eight. Now this line here, the slope, that is your radius, right? 
So that is 8 because it goes from the centre to the outside of the circle. So that is 8. So although they want the height of the tunnel, what I'm going to do is I have to get this little bit here. This little bit of my triangle. So I'm going to call that x. It's a short side, so my working will be x squared equals 8 squared minus 6 squared. Which is 28. I will then do the square root of 28. And I get 5.29 to two decimal places. Now you could probably get away with one decimal place as well. I'll urge you never do the nearest whole number though. One or two decimal places. Now to answer the question, they want the height of the tunnel. So I know this little bit here is my 5.29. This bit here that I'm drawing over just now with a zigzaggy line, that's from the centre to the top of the circle. I'm hoping you spot that that's a radius. So that there is also eight. So the height of the full tunnel is the radius of 8 plus the little bit I worked out on my triangle, giving us a total height of 13.29 metres. Okay, so four marks. These are worth in the exam. A mark for your triangle. A mark for doing the correct Pythagoras sum. If you do the wrong sum and your triangle's wrong, you lose two marks. Or if you've got no triangle. So please, triangle, make sure you do the correct sum. A mark for your answer and a fourth mark for the extra wee bit. There's always an extra step at the end. Okay. And the trickiest bit, I think, is getting that triangle to start you off. Okay, let's look at a second scenario. There's three styles of questions. So that was a height of a tunnel style. My second example, this time we have a pipe and we have to find the depth of liquid in a pipe. They quite often do these ones um, about like oil tankers or milk tankers as well because they're giant big cylinders, aren't they? So they ask for the depth of liquid. So again, we need to make our triangle. Remember my rule? Centre to the cord, centre to the outside. So I'm going to draw my line from the centre down, my centre to the outside. And again, I've told you I like going to the right. So there's my right angled triangle. I'm going to extract it. Okay, so the information they've given it is that A to B is 10, and I've split that down the middle, so I'm using 5. They've told me the diameter is 15, but this slope here, from the centre to the outside, is your radius, so we're going to have to half the 15, so that is going to be 7.5. Again, the X is a short side, so we're going to do a takeaway. So X squared equals 7.5 squared minus 5 squared, which is 31.25. We will then take the square root of our answer. And again, to two decimal places, that leaves me with 5.59. Now, what I've just worked out is that this little bit here is 5.59, okay? Now, we want the depth. The depth of the liquid. So this bit here, from the centre to the bottom, remember that was our radius, so that was 7.5. Okay, so to get the depth that I want, I'm going to take the, the bit I worked out away from the radius. So I'm going to do 7.5, take away 5.59, which leaves me with... Um, oh, God, 1.91 meters. So the depth of my liquid is 1.91 meters. Okay, so my first scenario, when it's a height of a tunnel, um, was finding the radius plus your answer. This one, depth of liquid, is your radius minus answer. One last common scenario is this time we've got a tanker. There's liquid sitting in the tanker. They want to know what the width of that surface of that um, liquid is. So again, I'm going to draw my triangle centre to the cord, centre to the outside. So my triangle is going to come down from the centre to the bottom, centre to the outside. And then I'll extract my triangle. Because quite often that diagram's got other things, it's not enough room to put all my information in. So let's look at my information. My radius is 5, so the slope is 5. And the depth of the liquid is 1.5. So this time they have told me this bit is 1.5. So I've got an extra wee bit of working to do to work out this side here on my triangle. I can work it out. So in the last question, remember, we realised, oh, wait a minute, this bit here is a radius. 
So that bit there is 5, centre to the bottom is 5. We need to come up 1.5. So 5 take away 1.5 leaves us with 3.5 on our triangle. And we're going to find out this bit here. Okay, so it's a short side again. Quite often they are always working out the shortest sides. So x squared equals 5 squared take away 3.5 squared which is 12.75. And when we square root that to two decimal places, we will get 3.57. Now, x is only half of the chord, so to get the actual width, we're going to double our answer. So it's double of 3.57 which gives us 7.14 metres. Okay, so that's me showing you the three kind of scenarios. There's one where you add to the radius, there's one where you take away from the radius, and then there is one where you double your answer. Okay, so here are five for you to go try yourself. So what I'd like you to do is pause it. Some of them, the right angle triangles are really obvious. I know, um, for example, that first one is at a different angle to mine, but it's very like the height of a tunnel one. It's just spun around. And I tell pupils all the time, if you're not sure, spin the page and keep it looking like the shape you want it to be. And the answers are in the next slide. So good luck. So what have we learned? Hopefully you've learned how to identify the required right angle triangle to use within the circle. Centre to chord, centre to the outside. That's my mantra, okay? And we've also maybe learned how to perform Pythagoras and our additional calculation to conclude the question. Remember what I said, it's either adding to the radius, taking off the radius or doubling it. Thanks very much and good luck.